Hey church family, uh, just here uh, wanting to offer something for you guys. I don't know how y'all do it at home, um, but uh, it's late. I know so many of y'all are coming in uh, from a long day and uh, maybe want to sit down and read the Bible with your kids. And I thought today's Word of Life passage, uh, which is what I do in my devotions on a daily basis, I use my, my phone, I actually use the, uh, the Word of Life app, uh, which is a, a really great tool um, that uh, my family and I, we make use of on a regular basis. But um, anyway, today's passage comes out of Nehemiah chapter 10. And it starts at verse 26, 28, and, and reads through verse 39. So for the sake of um, uh, just doing it with you, really, um, I'm going to read the passage. So uh, if you want to restart the video and uh, get the kids around, get the family around, get your Bibles, turn to Nehemiah 10 uh, at verse 28, uh, and we'll start reading it. It says, Now the rest of the people, the priests, the Levites, the gatekeepers, the singers, the Nethanim, and all those who had separated themselves from the peoples of the lands to the law of God, their wives, their sons, their daughters, everyone who had knowledge and understanding, these joined with their brethren, their nobles, and entered into a curse and an oath to walk in God's law, which was given by Moses, the servant of God, and to observe and do all the commandments of the Lord our God. Uh, the Lord our Lord and His ordinances and His statutes. Here's what they were. We would not give our daughters as wives to the peoples of the land, nor take their daughters for our sons. If the peoples of the land brought wares or any grain to sell on the Sabbath day, we would not buy it from them on the Sabbath or on a holy day. And we would forgo the seventh year's produce and the exacting of every debt. Also, we made an ordinance for ourselves to exact from ourselves yearly one-third of a shekel for the service of the house of our God, for the showbread, for the regular grain offering, for the regular burnt offering of the Sabbaths, the new moons, and the set feasts, for the holy things, for the sin offerings to make atonement for Israel, and all the work of the house of our God. We cast lots among the priests, the Levites, and the people, for bringing the wood offering into the house of our God according to our Father's houses at the appointed times year by year to burn on the altar of the Lord our God as it is written in the law. And we made ordinances to bring the first fruits of our ground and the first fruits of all the fruit of all trees year by year to the house of the Lord to bring the firstborn of our sons and our cattle as it's written in the law and the firstborn of our herds and our flocks to the house of our God, to the priest who minister in the house of our God, to bring the first fruits of our dough, our offerings, the first fruits, first from all kinds of trees, the new wine and oil, to the priest, to the storerooms of the house of our God, and to bring the tithes of our land to the Levites. For the Levites should receive the tithes in all our farming communities, and the priests, the descendant of Aaron shall be with the Levites when the Levites receive tithes. And the Levites shall bring up a tenth of the tithes to the house of our God. I love it. The guys serving in the temple were expected to give of their tithes and offerings. I know it's the Old Testament, but us pastors ought to be tithing and giving offerings too. To the rooms of the storehouse. Verse 39. For the children of Israel and the children of Levi shall bring the offering of the grain, of the new wine and the oil, to the storerooms, where the articles of the sanctuary are, where the priests who minister and the gatekeepers and the singers are. Get this. And we will not neglect the house of our God. Long passage. Hope you read it with me. Uh, just a real quick breakdown. Before I even get started, let's get a little quick background on it. We're in Nehemiah. Nehemiah and the Israelites are in captivity. They're, they're uh, uh, enslaved to the Persians. Artaxerxes is already King Artaxerxes from Persia, modern day Iran, uh, has sent Nehemiah back because Nehemiah asked. Uh, and Nehemiah and the Israelites have rebuilt the, the, the walls around the city of Jerusalem in a matter of two months. Absolutely amazing that they got this done. A phenomenal feat in and of itself. But after they get the walls rebuilt, this is probably around ah, 430, 440 B.C., so about 440 years before Jesus Christ. Um, 
And so they get these rebuilt. They reestablish worship in the temple. They have a celebration, a feast. Worship had been going on up to this point, but it had really been lackluster. It had been flat. Uh, it had been boring. Um, it had almost been self-serving, self-seeking. Sound familiar? Anyway, so with all this said, Nehemiah and the Israelites, they, they celebrate in chapter 9, I think it is. It says that they celebrate, chapter 8, the Feast of Tabernacles. Well, when they celebrate this Feast of Tabernacles, they're so moved that in chapter 9, the Israelites begin to confess sin. When you really are worshiping God, we begin to confess sin. This is a place where maybe you could stop the video with your family and have a discussion about what kind of sin are we wrestling with? What kind of sin we may need to confess to God? Something to think about there. So stop and have that discussion as a family. All right, now you're back to the video. Uh, and if you didn't pause it or stop it, that seemed really weird. I hope you think about the sin we need to confess. But see, we fast forward and we get to chapter 10. All the Israelites, after confessing sin, decide that they want to reconstitute the covenant. They want to go back to worshiping the way their grandparents and their great-grandparents had worshipped. They were sick and tired of living in a world that was fallen and broken and that was just so fake. They were done with it. They wanted something real with God. I hope that's you. I know it's me. And I know it's a whole lot of people in the Unity family. But see, notice what happens. They make this covenant with God. And Nehemiah, Nehemiah writing this, he talks about them making a document and sealing it. And I love this. In Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 1, he starts naming off all the people who signed this document. Uh, signifying Israel's commitment to this covenant with God. The first name in Nehemiah 10. Take a wild guess. Without looking, what do you think that name is? Come on, throw them out. If some of you guessed Nehemiah, you're exactly right. Because in Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 1, it says, Number 1, Nehemiah the governor. He was the leader over Israel. He was the leader over Jerusalem at the very least. And he puts his, first, his name on there first. Leaders lead by example. And Nehemiah was doing exactly that. He recognized that he had to confess sin. He had to remake covenants with God. He had to do these things. See, now notice this. Here's the, here's the awesome thing. Down to verse 29, they make this covenant and they go through this list of people. And it says in verse 29, And they entered into a curse and an oath to walk. In God's law, which is kind of interesting because this idea of a curse really is called a curse right. And what would happen is when you entered into a covenant or a contract back in this day, you would take an animal and with that animal, you would split that animal in half. You would lay one half on one side, one half on the other side, and you and the person making the covenant would walk through it. And the idea here is, is that you're making a promise to each other that if we break this covenant, if we break this contract or this commitment we're making with each other with a curse right, which is what they entered into here, you're saying that if I break it, may the same thing happen to us that happened to this animal. May we be split in two and be taken away from this earth. And so they enter into this, this oath with God. They were serious about this. Uh, they were committed to their decision. And it says, get this, I love it in verse 29. It says, to walk in God's law, which was given by Moses, a servant and God, and to observe, which meant to look at what God's law said and to learn it, to know it, and do all the commandments. You know, it's a challenge we have. Good discussion question for the family. Again, get ready to hit pause, mom or dad. But a great opportunity to talk about how we, as a family, observe God's law. How do we study it? How do we know it? And how do we do it? How are we doing as families in doing the commandments? Talk about that as a family. What of the commandments are you doing well as a family? What of the commandments do you maybe need to do a little better? Hit pause and have that discussion now. All right, you guys are back. Hope it was good, lively discussion. Here's the next thing. Notice they make a commitment here, and they go into basically three areas of commitment. In verse 30, 
They say, we're not going to give our daughters as wives to the people of the land. See, they were intermarrying their, their daughters with people that lived in the promised land. They were intermingling God's people, God's work, with the things and the ways and the culture of the world. You've heard it said, we need to get more of the church into our culture, not more of the culture into our churches. And see, that's something we could really think about in another discussion piece as a family, is where, are we, how are we doing as a family? How are you doing, mom and dad, with protecting your kids and your family? Gosh, this is stinging while I ask it, because I'm thinking of it myself as a dad. How are we protecting our kids and our families from the culture of this world? See, that's what they were doing as, as Israelites. They were saying, we needed to be set apart. We need to be, here's the key word here, sanctified. They needed to be set apart from the world and to God. And it first started with their intermarriage with people in the area. So stop and have that discussion. How are you as a family doing with the culture of this world? All right, welcome back. Here we go. Next thing, verse 32. Also, they say we made ordinances for ourselves. And from verse 32 to 34, they are talking about temple worship. They want to re they want to restart. They want to kickstart worship in the temple. Because what had been going on was a joke. And they all knew it. It was fake. It wasn't real. They were showing up, checking a box, and they were saying, Hey, we had church this week. Where are we going to lunch? What's going on this week? Who's playing this afternoon on the TV? You know, that, that's what they were No, they wanted to get back to what real worship is. And they wanted to go back to worshiping the way God told them to worship all the way back when he gave it to Moses. And so they reset these laws. And what they're saying is, is we want to reestablish our relationship with God on God's terms. And we want to give God what he really is owed. How are we doing that as families? Are we really worshiping God? Or are we just checking boxes when it comes to our church attendance and our Sunday school attendance and our Bible study time and how we serve and where we minister. Good discussion piece to have as well. See, here in verse 35, it then picks up, and I, I love, look, Baptist preacher, I love this. It says, and we made ordinances to bring the first fruits of our ground. And they go into talking about all the first fruits. And what they mean is, uh, at the end, verse 37, the end of it, he says, and to bring the tithes of our land to the Levites. They're talking about giving their offerings and their tithes. God, God had told them earlier and years before to bring in the first fruits of what they had because God knows, as much as we know, that we can talk all day long about loving God. But put your money where your mouth is. See, God knows that our currencies, regardless of what it is, and for them, it was the first fruits of their land. It was the fruit of their land was their currency. God knew that if they could trust God with the first of it, that they would trust God with all of it. God doesn't need it. He doesn't ask us to give tithes and offerings for our, our sake, or for His sake. He asks us to give it for our sake. Because it sets our heart, and it sets our priorities in order where we begin giving God the first and the best of what we have, not just in our tithes and offerings, but in everything in life. When it comes to our jobs, when it comes to our school, when it comes to what we're doing at, at home in our relationships, when it comes to, hey, look, everybody's at home right now. What are you doing uh, at home and helping out? Or are you just laying around playing Xbox all day long and saying, ah, forget about it. Mom and dad can do everything. Good discussion to have. How are you giving God the first and the best in your life? And how can you do a better job of doing that? The last question, I want us to wrap it up here. See, in verse, uh, verse 39 at the very end, it says, And we will not neglect the house of our God. See, here's the key thing out of the entire passage to talk about as a family is this. The Israelites knew that they had not been worshiping God like they were supposed to. They had been doing it wrong all along. And they were ready to come and start doing it right. They realized that they had gotten caught up in all kinds of the wrong stuff, busy about all the stuff that didn't matter, 
worrying about everything that really wasn't a big deal. And then all of a sudden, they realized that they needed to make some new priorities. We as a church and as a people have been forced to make some new priorities. We're all sitting at our homes trying to wonder, what in the world are we going to do? Maybe spend time together as a family. Maybe read your Bibles together as a family. Pick it up and just spend time in it with each other. Maybe ask ourselves, what is our worship and our fellowship of Jesus Christ will it really look like? And what do we need to do to make some to renew some old covenants with God, to get back on track of where He wants us to be? I hope you all have some good discussion about this as a family in your living room or around your dinner table. And uh, spend some time praying about that. God bless.